Well, good morning. Welcome into a Market Day Report. I'm Scott Shaldi. Happy Friday to you. I hope you're having a good one. It's the last day of the week, and there's only one a week, so let's not screw this one up. How about that? Let's take a look and see what we did overnight, and I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. It wasn't very good. Let's take a look at corn. At least it wasn't when I did the radio show. Maybe everything could have changed. No, it didn't change. It actually got a little worse. Sub corn down four and three quarter cents to 401 and a quarter. Uh, 416 and three quarters was last in D. Sets off four cents there. And that was about a half cent off the low of the day. You know what? Uh, today's a big day for these prices because we got out of the box hot all three days in a row, the last three days. Uh, the, for the first two days, we kind of settled back in and kind of almost closed weak. Yesterday, though, it was kind of a, a hit or miss, kind of a, it was a push. We weren't sure if it was a weak close or not. And today was going to be a big day to tell us what it really was. And I think it's telling us right now. Soybeans. Uh, they're down double digits, like we were up double digits yesterday. Steps down 10 and a half cents to 10.64. Half cent off the low of the day, and overnight we had about a 12 cent range. Look at the Novi New Crop down 11 and a half cents to 10.68. Ouch. Let's move on to the wheat and see what's happening there. Chicago wheat down three and a quarter in SEP, 5.34 and a half last there. We're down three cents in the D's to 5.59 and a half, and both of those are about a half to one cent off the lows of the day there. Hard red wheat, Kansas City. Uh, it's down two and a half cents, basically across the. Well, I had a lot of coffee today. Whew, God, it's hard to talk. Two and a half cents lower in SEP. 5.59 is last there. We've got a D's board down two and a half cents to 5.75 and a half. It's like I'm, it's like I'm my father. I won't drink. I don't. I only stop drinking when I start shaking. Um, spring wheat, two and a half cents better in SEP overnight to 6.06 and a quarter. We've got March up two and a quarter cents to 6.41. All right, how about that? And then, then finally, let's go to cotton. Uh, cotton was down 62 points there. That wasn't good. The 68, 28 only. Oh, what's that about? Uh, I'm going to call it 13 points off the low of the day. So there you go. Let's bring in our next guest analyst. Maybe he can put a smile on her face and tell us what it all means. And that's going to be Mr. Brian Hoops. He's the president of Midwest Market Solutions, Springfield, Missouri. Oh, there he goes. You're not going to get hit by a car wearing that shirt today. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What, uh, what are your thoughts here, brother? Well, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head in your uh, opening segment there. We are looking at a, a real dangerous day if you're a bull mark, bull trader here. You expected we'd see some follow through. We didn't see anything. In fact, we saw lower prices overnight. And uh, we're very close to giving back all of yesterday's gains. And because yesterday was kind of inside consolidation day in corn, I think if we take out those lows, that's going to be technically real bearish to this market. Wheat had done the same pattern just three, four days ago, and it has really sold off since uh, doing that. Um, you know, the, the fund traders are the ones that are going to have to come in this morning and buy this lower opening and try and push things higher. There's no one else buying. The farmer's not buying. The commercials aren't buying at this price level. Um, it's, it has to be short covering by the funds. Otherwise, we have a lot of farmers selling that that's hitting the market, and the market's going to drift back in here with that uh, – extended forecast that calls for wetter conditions, cooler conditions into the end of August and a chance of rain next week. You know, you're, you're exactly right. There's nobody buying except the funds. And, and usually they buy in, 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 you know, increments of three days, right? So arguably it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We had a few laggards still on the market yesterday. But for those days that they were buying, we got out of the box hot. I, I really felt like, you know, good, nice, strong opens. And throughout the day, whether maybe they were looking at the equity markets or whatever, we were still grinding back down and we closed just not strong. I, I can't say they were weak because some of them we were up on the, on the day. And yesterday was right on the precipice of not really a good close, not really a bad close. And boy, today was going to be an important one. And I think we got our answer. So far, we do anyway. You know, long time to the closing bell, but you're going to have to see those funds step in and, and buy this market right on the opening to try and push us back higher. Um, it's going to be difficult. You don't have a lot of news. You don't have an export sale this morning that can give you a little bit of, of uh, upside momentum. Um, you just faced with this weather forecast and going into a weekend that uh, looks like it, you know, forecast wetter today than what it was yesterday for middle of the week with that Iowa Illinois rain event, maybe one to two inches. Yeah, I agree with you 100 percent. All right. We're both watching the same thing, it looks like. Thank you very much. Stay right there, though. We're going to go away. We're going to pay some bills. And we're going to come back and talk about how the, uh, the, um, what, the meats, the uh, hogs, the cattle, what, how they closed yesterday. All right, I'm not going to have any more coffee, I promise. We'll see you right back after a minute. All right, welcome back. And again, happy Friday. Let's see about what we've got going on in the livestock markets as of yesterday, right? They don't trade overnight. And remember, I like that because... You know, that overnight market's almost like a get-out market. If you're in it, it's not usually a good thing. So we'll, uh, these guys somehow, they had a strong enough union that they were able to make it so they didn't have to trade overnight. Anyway, live cattle, we're up. Uh, let's see, what's that? Uh, go right to the October, up $2.32 yesterday. 
188.60 was last, but we still had some room. We were only about we're 65 cents off the high of the day. But, you know, the ranges were good yesterday. That was a $3 range. So we're 65 cents off the high of a $3 range. So that's not too bad, is it? So these was up a buck 62 to 188.90. All right, moving right along from live cattle to the feeder cattle. What's uh, that got in store for us? Well, SEP was up a buck 20 yesterday to 257.90. And then again, uh, we had almost a $4 range over there. It was like. Uh, 382 was the range, uh, and so we were like, yeah, we're close to the high there, but well, a buck off it. So that's that's legit. A buck 20 was uh, the change on the day to the upside. September uh, closed yesterday at 257.90. We had a 257.07 close in October, which was up 70 cents. Uh, lean hogs, and then we'll get back to our guest analyst. Lean hogs closed a little bit easier here. Uh, October was down 22 cents yesterday to 77.80 in the middle of the range, basically. But if you go all the way out the deferreds, we did have a close a little bit higher. April closed up three ticks or seven cents to 78.67. We have 60 seconds left for Mr. Hoops. Brian, thanks uh, for being on. Uh, what are your thoughts here real quick in the livestock? Uh, you know, cattle was a surprise to me yesterday that they would have as much strengthen the cash markets as they did. We saw two to three dollar better cash trade in the Southern Plains and the futures market kind of reacted to it first before we heard any cash uh, news developing the futures were already starting to move higher. So I think it kind of caught the trade off guard, new high closes, all everything looks good from that standpoint. Just, uh, you know, there's those concerns that we have remaining about demand, uh, packers cutting kills, trying to prop up their boxes because they're still looking at big uh, deficits as far as their margins. And then we had cold storage yesterday afternoon, both beef and pork, about 3% drawdown uh, from last month. So overall, I think a supportive cold storage report. We'll see if the hogs can build on anything today. All right. Perfect stuff. Perfect timing. They're telling me to wrap. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much, Brian. Oops. Thank you. Weekend. He's a president of uh, Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri, and I'm good to go.